Part 1. Chapter 1. The Change. Still, alone, the beauty of the frozen greenness and the chilled river. The fog rising seems so alive. The sun shines bright and cold. My breath is so alive. Watch it sing with the awakening birds in daylight. Esther, age 12. Wednesday, March 30th, 1988, 10 o'clock a.m. Sorry for not writing sooner, but my father has been keeping me on my feet as much as possible. This is what we did. Friday, walk on Broadway for a few blocks. Saturday, see a movie with Uncle Mike, go to Chinatown and Little Italy. Sunday, go to Raymond's art studio, my father's friend. Go on Broadway downtown, Times Square. Go on Circle Line. Go to Bloomingdale's to get clothes. We went to a lot more places, but it's too much to name. Now I'm sitting here all dressed up and I'm going to tea at the plaza. Not just the plaza, but the plaza. And it's not just a mug of hot water and a bag of Lipton. It costs $17 each person. I'd rather get a t-shirt that they sell in Strawberry Field, Central Park, that looks like this. Cool, huh? Okay, gotta go. I'll write more later. Esther. P.S. Yesterday we went to the zoo, the botanic gardens, and Mike's loft. Thursday, March 31st, 1988. Today I got my hair cut at some famous place with three giant floors. My sister Carmen got hers cut too. Mine didn't look so good, just short on one side. I said they could do whatever they wanted to my hair, so the guy just cut off one side. It looked pretty bad. My sisters looked good. She knew what she wanted to ask them for a china doll. They took her to a different floor. Everybody always thinks that my sister's older than me because she's taller and knows a lot about fashion, but Carmen is younger than me, one and a half years younger. After that, my sister had the idea to perm my hair, so we bought a perm kit and she permed it for me. So now it looks better. It still looks shitty, but weird and different. Well, I have to go clean the room that's not mine. Goodbye. Esther. Sunday, April 3rd, 88. Not quite sure what time it is. I'm not even certain about what time zone I'm in. I'm in the airplane headed for San Francisco. You think that I'd be glad going home, but I'm not really that happy about it for two main reasons. One, I'm sad leaving New York, which I had grown to like, and the friends adults I made there. And two, when I get back, many fears are to be faced. I have to win Christine back as my friend without being that mean to Amy. Amy really doesn't know what she's doing, and it scares me to see somebody so influential and powerful be so mean. And from what she told me, she and or her mother don't really know what true friendship is. Hasn't Amy ever heard the song, We All Need Somebody to Lean On? In fact, I know she has because one day when we were walking up in a trail in Tilden, we were all singing it. Also, as I said before, I got my hair cut and permed. Personally, I think it looks nice, but I don't know how other people will react. Also, I'm reading my favorite V.C. Andrews book, Dark Angel, for the umpteenth time. And I realize that some element is missing from my life, and that's true love. No, romance. I mean, Christine is going with Ryan from last I heard, and I really need someone too. It's spring, romance is in the air. Why can't I find anyone? Well, I can still look, but that's a problem too, because I don't like anyone. And it also greatly disturbed me to find out that Christine was telling all her secrets to Amy and just lying to me. It just makes me sick. Amy is ruining Christine and mine's friendship, and I think she's very conscious about what she's doing. Well, I'll keep you posted. Esther. April 5th, 88. Amy and I are friends again. Well, I gotta go clean. Goodbye. Esther. April 6, 88. In school. In fourth period math. Hi. Last night I realized who I like. It's Sean. He goes to my school, but he's not in any of my classes. Sean's friends with Christine, so he got my number from her and called me. We talked on the phone a lot. I don't think he likes me, but surprisingly he asked me to go to the movies with him. But not to suggest it was a date. He said that we should take Christine and Ryan or someone. He asked me for Friday night, but Christine said she couldn't make it. I don't know. I'm going to call Sean later. These are my pre-plans for my birthday party. I'm turning 13 in exactly one month and 21 days. Invite boys, Sean, Ryan, girls, Amy, Christine, Letitia, Diana, Blair, Conti, Gwendolyn, Esther. Do not invite self. Thursday, April 7th, 88. Hi. I'm in fifth period science. I finished my test early, so I'm just sitting here. Today before class, Mrs. Ross, my science teacher, said that she thinks I came back from spring break different than I was before. 
that I seemed happier now. Then she complimented me and said I looked pretty. I told her I went to New York over spring break, and then Mrs. Ross said maybe that's what brought about the change. It's weird. I think visiting New York this spring break maybe did change me. Because earlier today in English, I heard Cynthia talking behind me. She's always hated me. She was talking about me saying how she hated how some days I come to school looking so gross and other times I come looking like a fashion model. I guess Cynthia meant I look good today. I don't feel like a fashion model today. I just didn't know what to wear this morning, so I grabbed my dad's hat and a scarf. But maybe that's what she meant. Maybe it's the perm. Or maybe New York did change me. I think it did. I do feel more alive after having gone to New York. I love the rainstorms there. But I have changed so much since starting junior high this year. And when I think about last year in the sixth grade, that seems like forever ago. Last year in the sixth grade at Malcolm X, I had more friends than I do now. For most of the fifth grade, I had no friends. Everybody hated me. The other kids did stuff like every day and put things like thumbtacks in my chair, spit spitballs at me. The teacher, Miss Gallagher, didn't care. Although she was kind of like stupid, no, naive. She let anybody do what they wanted. Some kids hung a sign on the wall saying, beware of Esther. Surgeon's general warning says that Esther is dangerous to your health. So anyway, I don't know why, but everybody hated me. So I would just spend all recess alone looking at my feet or at the sky twirling under the big tree. And I never ate lunch very much. I just usually spend lunchtime by myself in the library. The librarian was my only friend at school. Sometimes I'd help her shelve books, but mostly I'd just read. I usually just read this big book. We couldn't check it out. The book was about witches and witchcraft. Mostly just a history book, but one rain spell I got from it would always work for me. Let it rain, let it rain. The old woman is in the lair. The little bird sings, and the cock crows. And when I said this three times in a row, it would rain every time. And that's how I found out I'm a witch. But I've actually always known, and I've always known that I'm a good witch. I only do good things with magic. Anyway, at the end of fifth grade, I started making up spells. I made up this one love spell. I had a crush forever, since the fourth grade. I'm my older brother's best friend named Blake. He was in the sixth grade at Malcolm X, and I was in the fifth grade, and he acted like I wasn't alive. But it was at the end of the fifth grade when I started making up spells, and I made a love charm where you write on pink paper with red pen, fold it and tie it in a certain way with red string, and then soak with red wine vinegar. After that, Blake started noticing my existence and saying hi to me at school and even asked me to meet him for lunch. The word got out and other girls wanted the love spell too. It got really popular and all the girls were trying it. After that, I made some friends. So I had some friends by the end of fifth grade. And in the sixth grade at Malcolm X, I had the best teacher I ever had, Miss Cole. She recognized my writing talent and brought me presents when it wasn't even my birthday. But when I started seventh grade and started at King for junior high, most of my friends went to Willard, the other junior high in Berkeley, or a different school. Also, a lot of people that hated me before went to King with me. Okay, I gotta go. I'll finish writing later. Esther. Later. 6.30 p.m. Hi. I should be cleaning my room, but I wanted to finish what I was saying earlier. I was writing before about how much things have changed now that I'm in the seventh grade, especially with my friends. I remember in Malcolm X, for most of the fifth grade, everybody hated me, but at the end of fifth grade, I made some friends. Then, the summer in between the fifth and sixth grade, I went on the trip. The trip was my mom's idea, a summer-long camping trip. She wanted to take me and my sister, our two brothers, and the dog in a station wagon all across the USA. And she did. My parents were divorced by the time I went on the trip. My dad was in Brazil doing capoeira, an African-Brazilian martial art dance form. And my mom and us just camped and lived in the car for the summer. We didn't have anywhere else to go. Anyway, I remember when I got home from the trip and started the sixth grade, it was good that everybody didn't hate me anymore, so I had some friends. And I had Miss Cole that year. But one time, these girls I was friends with, Conti and Aisha, along with Paula and Cynthia, the twins, came up to me after school. They all took turns slapping me in the face and saying mean things. I didn't try to stop them, I just stood there and cried. Paula and Cynthia, the twins, have hated me since forever, you know, a long time. Paula and Cynthia were sometimes sort of my friends, but mostly not. They go to King with me. But even though Aisha and Conti did that to me in the sixth grade, I stayed friends with both of them. Except now I'm not friends with Aisha anymore. Aisha was my only friend that went to King with me, 
When we started school, we would go to the North Berkeley Library together once a week to read and check out books. But then one day at school, Aisha said she was just using me from my MTV, which didn't even make sense because what we had in common was that we both liked going to the library and reading, and we barely ever watched TV together. Aisha said that right in front of Paula and Cynthia, so maybe she was just taking their side. But Aisha and I are still not friends, and I have not been back to the North Berkeley Library since then because it makes me melancholy thinking of when we were friends. So after that, Amy and Christine became my only friends at King. Neither of them went to Malcolm X, nor do they know Paula and Cynthia, and for that, I'm glad. At first, it was just Christine and I. We were in science together. Then Amy moved to Berkeley in January, so we all became friends. Amy's other friends are Letitia and Deanna, so we're all kind of a group at school. I only have three friends outside of school, Blair, Conti, and Gwendolyn. Blair and Conti used to be best friends. They are both born on an island called Maui in Hawaii, and they are both the astrological sign of Cancer the Crab. I was born in San Francisco, and my sign is Gemini, the twins. Over last summer, Conti stopped liking Blair. Conti is always getting jealous of everybody. She's sometimes even jealous of me. Even though, like I told you, Conti was one of the girls who took turns slapping me in the face last year, she's still my friend, but we don't always get along. But Conti and I still do psychic readings and stuff together, sometimes. I don't do psychic readings with Blair anymore. Last year in the sixth grade, Blair, Conti, and I used to always hang out together and read each other's futures and make up visions, like stories, to go along with the futures. But then once, at the end of the sixth grade, Blair and I read each other's futures. I had always given Blair good futures, and she'd always given me good futures, too. But then that one time she read my future and said I was missing my father, like he wasn't around anymore. I think Blair was feeling bad and maybe jealous because she does not know who her own father is, so she was taking that out on me. So after that time, I didn't feel like doing psychic readings with her anymore, so we don't. But Blair and I, we never argue. We take a jazz dance class together. Also, Blair's house smells good. It's like that coconut skin trip lotion or something. And Blair's mom is nice. I don't know why, but Conti and I argue a lot, and her house smells sort of bad. I'm not sure what the smell is exactly. Maybe sour milk? And Conti's mom is sort of mean. But even though sometimes we argue a lot, Conti's still my friend. I guess if my house smells like anything, it smells like books. Because that's all we really have here. My dad has a bookshop on Shattuck. But there are so many books in our house, so it kind of feels like a bookstore here too. Gwendolyn is my only other friend. She's my next door neighbor, but only part of the time on the weekends at her dad's. The house smells good, like those gingerbread windmill cookies. I don't know why I'm writing about all the house smells. Gwendolyn is 14, two years older than me, and she started at Berkeley High this year. I've known her since I was two, when I moved from San Francisco into my house on Rose Street. I also hang out with my sister Carmen a lot, but she's younger in the fifth grade and has her own group of friends at Arts Magnet where she goes to school. Gotta go. Later. 9.18 p.m. Christine just called, so it turns out she is free after all this Friday, tomorrow. I told you about that yesterday, how Sean asked me to go to the movies with him, but he wanted to ask Christine and Ryan, and Christine says she wasn't free, but now she is. She's coming over after school to spend the night, so maybe we will go to the movies with Sean after all, if it's okay with my dad. Although I kind of doubt we'll go because Christine said she doesn't like Sean, not even as a friend. Anyway, I really do like Sean, and I hope he calls me tonight. He said he would. Bye. Esther. Friday, April 8th, 1988. Hi. I feel like I'm one of the last girls I know who has never kissed a boy, not even in truth or dare. I have held hands twice in my life. I held hands once with Noah, who I went with in the sixth grade. Going with means you're together like that. And once with Peter, who I went with in camp this last summer. I don't know. All I know is I don't want to kiss anyone, but maybe if I did, it might be Sean. I'm really starting to like him a lot. Sean and I talk on the phone almost every night, usually for a long time, and about all kinds of things. That's all. Esther.